Hello and welcome to the show. The big news this week is that apart from rising cases, ongoing deaths, a looming major financial crisis and total upheaval of life in Britain, the coronavirus crisis in the UK is completely solved and everything has gone back to normal. Boris Johnson has said yes, everything is definitely solved and no, I'm not just in denial but almost everyone overseas is still completely buggered, so we mustn't go on about it too much. What a relief. <laughs> In other news, the Brexit negotiations have hit a snag, with the government's oven-ready deal catching fire because someone accidentally put it in the microwave and it turns out it had some oil in it. The head of negotiations said, we cannot be blamed for this metaphor getting out of hand but we will be blaming the EU wherever possible. Joining me tonight, uh, actor and campaigner, Hugh Lone, and comedian and animal rights campaigner, Jim Davison. Hugh Lone has been in many big budget movies, including An Inoffensive Christmas Tale and An Inoffensive Christmas Tale 2, even less to complain about here. However, he recently took on the law and tried to make it illegal for anyone to call someone else a ninny. He is an avid fan of croquet and does a huge amount of charity work for children and donkeys. Hugh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, and just, you know, I think even even if we could bleep out that, that in ninny word that you said then, that'd be amazing. But apart from that, yeah, completely right. Bang on the money. Great. And next to Hugh is the often controversial comic... Jim Davison. Jim is known for his famous comedy routines from the 1970s, including The Problem With Them Next Door and How To Batter Your Girlfriend To Death And Hide The Body. I found that one particularly funny, by the way, Jim <laughs> fan. Um, in recent years, he has been campaign campaigning solely against animal rights, saying that animals are basically just meat and feathers with no feelings and shouldn't have any rights at all. Thank you for joining me tonight, Jim. Absolute pleasure. And what I would say is that animals are delicious. So uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, have, feed them up as you are and eat whichever one you want. Absolutely. The first story we're going to look at tonight concerns the BBC. The new Director General, Tim Davey, says that he's going to tackle the left-wing comedy bias as he takes over as Director General. And it says in this, in this, in this article that he's identified everything is completely biased and he wants to move it over to make comedy more right-wing in the organisation. However, it did also say in this article that he turned up on the first day of the job in jeans. Um, Hugh, is he sending mixed messages there? I think, um, I think jeans is a pretty, you know, you know, rather it's a, it's quite a, quite a casual way to start something. And I actually, I actually really love it. I think it shows it's kind of like, you know, it shows that you're ready to, to approach things, but in sort of a sit back in the chair way. Um, I do think, you know, I think so. So you're saying that he's trying to make things much more right wing or much more left wing. Absolutely. He's trying to make things much more right wing because he's identified that all comedy is basically just bashing the Tories, left wing, liberal nonsense, basically, is what he's oh. saying. And that he wants to get rid of that and make it much more about jokes about the disabled and gay people and that sort of thing. Right. right. And I suppose like, would we say, would we say nonsense? We probably wouldn't, would we? If we were being, if we were being quite serious about it, probably wouldn't say nonsense. I think that um, his message is, is, is a, you know, arguably bad one. We should be keeping, you know, things pretty left wing um, and pretty, pretty PC because there is good comedy in that and I think uh, if we really if we really focus on the jeans you know I love them uh, I've got a pair from Evans uh, I love them I can do all sorts of regular you know everyday pedestrian things in them I can go to the, the co-op you know get lotto numbers all in jeans so I think my my sort of point of reference is that I love jeans interesting yeah. interesting Jim um, Hugh the big fan of the jeans what's what are your thoughts Oh, that's typical, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's, he says this about he's going to bring in right-wing comedy, but me and my agent, we haven't had the call, have we? Do you know what I mean? And if he's wearing jeans, he's just the same as the rest of these tree huggers. You know what I mean? Put put a suit on, put a nice mm. tie on, have a bit of respect, you know, for the for the licence fee payers that you go around with your little begging bucket, get get your money out of them. Do you know what I mean? That, 
he, he says he's going to make a change, but it's the BBC. You know, he'll be off on a march for the BLM or whatever it is, or saying, you know, vegans need rights and disabled people should be out and get on a tube. It's, it's just political correctness gone mad. And for me, you know, you can well, make... Well, we don't, we don't love the word mad, uh, actually, on our side. We prefer just like a little bit oozy, you know? Mm. Interesting. I suppose the question is, Jim, you've had a lot of experience in comedy. Can a man in jeans ever be funny? Well, you name me a man in jeans that is funny. I, I think Eric Morecambe used to wear trousers. I think most of the fools and horses, they were in trousers. Um, I think then women started to get into comedy and then that's when the jeans came in and uh, the standard dips. I mean, honestly, when was the last time anything funny happened on the BBC? Probably when I was there, let's be honest. Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah, it, it does that. seem like quite a correlation from when Britain was funny mm. to when Britain got slightly less formal in attire. Well, exactly. And, and, and back in those days, you know, we, we used to dress smart, we would speak our mind and I'd have a go at everyone, you know, whether you're black, brown, white, whatever religion, it doesn't matter. I'd have a go at all of you. You know what I mean? You can, you, you can wear what you want. I, I, I'm going to take the mickey out of you and yours. Do you know what I mean? But now Hugh, it's like, do you have oh, a counterpoint well. to that? Well, I suppose uh, I don't think like, you know, being universally uh, hating is maybe the, like, the root of, of very, very good comedy. Uh, I suppose it's the root of like sort of a dig maybe. And um, I would say, I'd say that if we kind of like, we kind of like, I think, you know, treat it with kindness. I think jeans kind of send an excellent, an excellent comedy message in that they're pliable. You can work in them and everyone has a pair, you know? Choose death. That's the title of our next story. Our okay. title of our next story is Choose Death. Hysterical Twitter mob rounds on Dettel Tube advert turned to the office. So essentially, on the tube, there's been an advert encouraging people to get back to work. They say, get back to work, families, get back to the camaraderie in the office. And everyone on Twitter, perhaps quite cynically, is saying, I don't want to go out and die just so that we can sell more Dettel wiping down the office surfaces. Um, Jim, how often do you dettle your surfaces? Is that fair for them to say? Yeah, listen, what all they're talking about is they don't want to go back to work. The reason why they don't go on about back to the office because they've got no mates. Do you know what I mean? These are the people that are sat in the corner tweeting and twatting and whatever else is they do. You know, they, the rest of us, we want to get back in the office so we can get into the pub straight afterwards and chat to our mates. But all these snowflakes, oh, I don't want to use bleach, whatever. The snowflake, they can't handle it. Get get me back in the office. Obviously, I don't work in office. I've got my own office. I've got an offshore account. I can do all that. And the agent does that. But, you know, if I did work in an office, you know, I'd be straight back in there. You know, I've bleached a lot of them, to be honest. Mm. I mean, Hugh, you also don't work in an office. But if you hypothetically did work in an office, would you be going back to the office that you hypothetically work in, though you don't work in it? Even though I don't work in it, um, I do. I do pay rent in it, in a, in a sense, because I think the rent that I pay is it's taxing to work at home. You know, and I think I think it is really difficult. All these people that are struggling to think about, you know, going back to work and whether to wipe down the surfaces. And I also do love the fact that they did it in the, the medium of poetry, which I think is pretty cool. You know, it's, a, it's an art form that's often, often lost. And I, I mean, I wish I could write a poem about it myself. You know, it would be, be something, something powerful, something punchy. And so I love, I love the message of the, uh, the poem. However, I do completely also love the message that people are hating it. Mm. I love both of them, yeah. And the choose death um, message, I personally found that quite powerful. Um, yeah. either, either of you? Yeah. I guess it is a choice at the end of the day. You know, they've chosen death and that's, you know, we've got to give you. Everyone's got their rights. They've chosen Better to death. choose it in a way than to have it thrust upon you. Better to be murdered. Yeah, worse to be murdered. Yeah, I suppose mm. the, the crux of it. Of the fittest, isn't it? We all need to get out there. Most of us, it'll be just like a bit of a cold and a cough. The people that are weak and holding us back hopefully they'll get it. So it's up to you. Do you know what I mean? You've got to get them out there. Well, we so probably wouldn't say hopefully. Like the hopefully they'll get it. We don't want them to get it though, do we? Well, it depends which one, doesn't it? You know, because the cities aren't the same as what they used to be when I was younger. Do you know what I mean? It all looks very different. That's why I keep going over to my place in Spain. Right. And ideally, the person who will survive is 
the om omnipresent Pret. Thank God. Yeah, we were not Pret for Pret to go out of business, if you know what, because Pret means um, ready in French, because I studied French. I uh, see. Yeah. So we, we uh, you weren't to know, but we do have a bit of a blanket ban of French words on this program. Not not not, not a problem, but just going I forward. I get on board with that. Yeah, okay. absolutely fine. Yeah. What about what about French derived words? Because a, a lot of our absolutely language. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Absolutely fine. Um, Brett is just full of these cyclists anyway in their lycra with their nuts on show, speeding past the red lights and stuff like that. I mean, we can pack them all away. I don't think we need to do that. It is that got... important. Sorry, yes. You... Well, no, I've got a counter argument for nearly all of that. Uh, it's full of cyclists, which is amazing for the environment. Uh, they're wearing lycra, so they're going to be more aerodynamic and thus conserve energy. And red lights, I actually agree with you on that one. We should obey all, you know, all traffic laws that are there to help us. And I should be allowed to drive in the cycle lanes. That's well, a quality, really, isn't it? I'm not sure if we would allow, allow, allow that, but we might, we might go, or oh, and turn a blind eye once or twice. Talking of turning a blind eye, I'd just like to turn to some viewer comments, if you guys don't mind. Um, we've had a message in for um, Hugh Lone. Um, this is Joe Brand Supervant tweets that Brexit loons have taken over the BBC. It's not for the fascists to control comedy commissioning. And I would have expected a stronger stance from the real Hugh Lone there. Lost some respect for him tonight. Hashtag stop Brexit. Um, do you have anything to say about that, Hugh? Uh, well, I'm really, I'm really, you know, Joe Brand super fan. Uh, I am sorry, and I'm such a big fan of Joe as well myself. So that makes it really difficult. And I guess, you know, I probably did take, you know, a bit of a bit of a uh, response to it. And I guess, I guess I would kind of go, if I was going in stronger, going in harder, I would say that, yeah, it's really, really, you know, just not on, guys. Really you know? not on. And I, um, yeah. on top of that, um, at Strength in a Union has texted in, did racist Jim Davison just call people weak for not going into work? Absolutely disgusting. What a horrible human being. I really expected more of the real Hugh Lone and for him to challenge him on that. Um, right. Hugh, any, any response? Yeah, so I think, I think if we actually, if we, if we had playback, you'd see that, that when you did mention that, um, when you did mention that, Jim, and uh, God, such, a, such a brilliant name, Jim, um, I did. I did sort of. I did sort of roll my eyes a little bit, uh, and you know that you in itself. I think sometimes subtle, subtle. I can. I, I can ask the the gallery to get the playback. We probably don't need to, though. So we can like probably. Uh, we can probably just uh, probably just remember it. And if you want, it, I sort of went like that uh, a little like bit, which a, I think was. Like I'm sure that you felt it, Jim, as well, when I did that. Jim, uh, did you feel? Did you feel the physical force of that eye roll when it happened earlier? Um, now, now you're bigging it up. I'm thinking actually we can go shirts off toe to toe in a car park if that's if that's how you want to settle it. But I don't know if the snowflake generation could handle that. Well, I don't know. Would you, I think, would you I like think, to do that, Hugh? I think you know a homoerotic you know display of two men you know being comfortable around their bodies would kind of be a brilliant thing. I'd be absolutely up for that. Um, we've actually had another text in from Barry Tweets, and he he says that. That's that's the last time I watched Notting Hill. He he seems to have just abandoned not only you, Hugh, but also your back catalogue because yeah. you've refused to really take a violent physical stance against Jim Davison when it came to a lot of these issues. Yeah, I guess what I would say is that that's that's probably not true, is it, Barry? Probably not the last time you watched Notting Hill. I don't think anyone's ever going to have a last time they watch Notting Hill. It uh, is quite difficult to escape. It is yeah. very difficult, you know. At any time, sort of around Christmas, you will find you will find my old mug up on there, uh, even if I've completely forgotten the accent of you, Grant. Um, however, uh, I do understand the, uh, the the wanting to take a firmer firmer response, and to that I would say, Jim. Um, really now yeah yeah well that's pretty strong response there from hugh do you have anything to counter that jim i've never seen that film sorry i didn't know you were a film actor sorry usually at christmas we watch all my old videos do you know what i mean and what we do is we'll we'll swap the cases around so you might get one christmas. of my stand-ups yeah, you might get one of the my, one of my Jingle Bell Balls um, special homemade DVDs, uh, you know, that I've made in a car with some um, some fans. 
So that's more of a Christmas tradition. I think people in the Great British nation would want to get on board with, but you can watch your American movies or whatever it is if you prefer. So Notting Hill is actually super based in, in London, but uh, your, your Jingle Balls, uh, once again, I think it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to show that you're kind of showing this homoerotic uh, tendencies. I think it's wonderful to show in a person in your position. I mean, I can tell the animosity is heating up between you. And just to let you know, I've heard in my earpiece that the production crew say that they should be able to rustle up those sort of foam fingers they had on Gladiator um, oh. somewhere. If that's how the two of you want to end the show, I'll leave that with you to discuss between yourselves. Um, in the meantime, let's move on to our next story. Um, our next news story is actually about a mother of 15, including three sets of twins, who has revealed that she's pregnant with her 16th child just three months after giving birth to, to her youngest and says that she won't rule out having any more. Now I have to say, initially I misread that headline and I thought that um, the mother, that she was 15 years old and that she'd just had her 16th child in three months, therefore single-handedly revolutionizing human reproduction in one amazing, amazing evolutionary leap. Um, Hugh, what do you think about that, bearing in mind that um, that isn't actually the story at all? So, I mean, if, if, it, if it were the story, you, 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 you are right, that would be a, somewhat of a medical marvel. Uh, mm. However, more it's, it's more of a more of a medical ouchie. I think is probably what we we, we describe it as, as a you know medical ouchie. And I think you know I think it's brilliant. I think she's she's really taking ownership of of her vagina and sort of you know treating it like a like a like a walkway for uh, for infants. I think she should still have her job as well because that's that's feminism as I understand it. And actually, and, and you know, women can have it all. Jim, can women have it all? Yeah, well, it's, I'm, I'm happy to give it to them if that's what they want, do you know what I mean? And, and like you say about, you know, her age, was she 15? Well, maybe she wasn't. But at the end of the day, I think women that are 15 should have the opportunity to get with, you know, old, older men. You take my mate, you know, his daughters, you know, they needed a break. So I said, well, come over to my place in Spain. And, you know, they were there doing their TikTok dances and sunbathing around the pool and doing all that kind of thing. And I think we easily could have got 15, 16 children out of them. So maybe we're onto something here, actually. That, that sounds lovely, Jim. Um, I have to say the producer's telling me to move on from that and to get as far away from that as possible. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed that story. Um, Hugh, just moving back to you on slightly safer territory there. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that this woman should be maybe given some kind of award? Well, I think I think I think what I uh, sort of like my super sweet sixteen child might be a nice thing, or or a, or a, or a, or maybe like a um, maybe a condom might be um, might be a, a useful a useful present, if not a little bit um, too little Sp too late. Uh, uh, stopping the horse after the stop closing the door after the horse has bolted. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah. still, maybe a, ge a gentle reminder. Pardon, Jim. Horses have magnificent penises, don't they? They, they? they do, yes. Yeah. It's something we can all agree um, on. The next story we were going to look at um, is actually part of our Devil's Advocate round. Um, this is an incredibly popular feature that we've had in the, on the show in the past, so we thought we'd bring it back. Basically, we're going to talk about a new story. And when you give me your opinions, I want you to give your devil's advocate opinion. So I want you to give me the opinion that's the opposite of what your actual opinion is. So if your opinion, well, if the story was, for example, the world's about to fly into the center of the sun and you didn't want that to happen or you thought that was a bad idea, what you'd say on this round was, oh, good. I think that's a great idea. I can't wait for the earth to fly into the center of the sun. Does that make sense? Yes. I'll give it a go. Excellent, excellent. Um, this story is actually in the Metro and it's about an Airbnb host who has banned anyone who weighs more than 16 stone from staying in their cottage. So the idea is that it's um, just a blanket sort of, uh, discrimination against the morbidly obese and um, unattractively fat. Um, what do you think about that, Jim? 
well, so they're like big and sweaty and right. Okay. Ah, uh, well, I think the big fat fatty should be a, they should be able to stay everywhere. Why don't we just take our taxes and spend them on cranes to lift the fatties into the Airbnbs and pop them in there. And then why don't we spend more of our taxes just shoveling food through the windows? Ah, oh, this is a bloody brilliant idea and typical of this country. At first, we're putting terrorists up in hotels and, and they're claiming their rights and they're staying in five-star hotels. And now we've got fatties in Airbnbs. Brilliant. How interesting. What a refreshing take from you there, Jim. I mean, tell me more about these cranes. Do you imagine that every home in Britain would have a crane outside it? Just, I mean, at enormous expense, just winching people in and out the whole time. Just, well, um, I guess so. And I guess if we get fat enough, you can inherit one from your parents because they'll have bloody heart attacks and die straight away. And so you don't need as many cranes because we're all dying of our clogged arteries pop one on each house and suddenly we've solved the housing crisis because everyone's too fat to live in them. Excellent. Yeah. So almost what you give up in life expectancy, you gain in cranes. Crane years, like dog years, but with a crane. Right. And maybe these cranes could be constantly reinforced as people get fatter and fatter and society gets bigger. And it just becomes a way of life to live with a crane. What I would say is we should keep some of the I don't want to say immigrant workers, but some workers who are happy to do it for a lesser, you know, wage to stay fit and healthy to, to do the engineering, to do sort of, you know, the maintenance on the crane. The cranes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just to keep them going because you need some, you won't be able to climb up them if everyone's too fat. So maybe there's like a team, there's like a little team. Well, that seems like a very well thought, thought through vision for Britain that Jim has there. Um, Hugh, do you have... A different idea of how maybe Airbnb could go forward. Uh, yeah, so I think, um, so, and obviously this is, you know, in opposite, so completely off the record. Uh, I think that, um, and you know, I just want a quick caveat, I think uh, people of all shapes and sizes are beautiful and wonderful. Um, but uh, I think that is a perfectly reasonable uh, request from the b, &B people. Uh, you know, it said in their argument, it was because they have very old oak beams and you wouldn't really allow a big person on your very, you know, old grandfather, would you? Uh, and I suppose, uh, you know, you don't want these, um, these, these chubbos uh, kind of sort of stealing uh, bits and bobs, you know, nibbles and, and whatever sort of, um, you know, waitrose um, nibbles and bits and bobs you've got lying around. Uh, so so what, you're, scoff the lot. Uh, what you're env envisioning is this possible epidemic in Britain of fat people going into people's Airbnbs, eating all their snacks and crushing their grandparents to death by accidentally sitting on them. And yeah. it's quite bleak in terms of a potential future. And so Especially you think that needs Airbnb, to be avoided. Yeah. I suppose I suppose this might be the um, the um, the the straw that breaks the the, the fatties back, um, so to speak. That's very well put. Well done. Thumbs up where this country's going. Um, a little little pun there. Um, so you don't feel sympathy. Maybe these people have um, problems with their metabolism or something, and that's why they're slightly bigger. You still say get rid of them. Uh, so 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 because of the the nature of the round, I say I have no sympathy for mm -mm, the mm -mm. wonderfully chubby chubsters in the bin with them. In, yeah. the, in the in the in recycling, the recycling recycling bin, hopefully, but it'll just regular bin, bin if you can't. Right, exactly. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That was a very interesting devil's advocate round. And now for the final news story, we're going to go back to normal. So just right. to let you know that this is going to be not your devil's advocate opinion, but your actual opinion. So if you were, for example, looking at a story about how the earth was going to fly into the sun before, if you actually thought that, oh no, it shouldn't fly into the sun, in the devil's advocate round you'd say, yes, I want it to fly into the sun. And in the non-devil's advocate round you'd say, well, no, I don't want it to fly into the sun. So I would have said, no, I will like it to fly into the sun, but now it's not that anymore. So no, I don't want it to fly into the sun. Does that make sense? Very nearly crystal clear. 
brilliant yeah brilliant. and I, I do buy the sun and I, they've backed me so yeah I, I totally get it back the sun the sun is giving us all life in various different ways mostly mostly in the in the star way though isn't it yeah the star, the daily star, the star on Sunday. They're all good, all good rags to be fair. Well, yeah, good for certain things, not for others. Our final story, I'm afraid, had to come back round to the thorny issue of Brexit, which is still ongoing. Um, trade talks are currently underway. The deadline is looming. And in this new story, it's about how MPs have hit back at Michael Barnier about fishing rights and that UK MPs are giving an ultimatum saying we need to fish in our waters otherwise the deal's off and we're going with no deal. Um, what's the big deal with the fish um, Jim? Well listen they are our waters and they want to talk about oh they can come over and send the French over, send the Italians over, send the blooming Somalians over, they can eat all our sharks and dolphins and stuff like that. Sorry, it's our waters. If anyone's going to eat our crocodiles, it's going to be us. Do you know what I mean? So, it, you know, I think, what well, get, get it done. Is, is anyone else just bored of Brexit? You know, oh, talks about this and trades about this. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, well, the lorry drivers will be fine. Just back them up on the M2 and we'll sort them all out. Fill them all with fish because it's our fish. We can do what we want with it. Do you know what I mean? So don't. And if we want to go to Spain and get some fish while we're there, you know, we pay our taxes there in a, in, in a way, in a way when we buy the beers, if they're cheap enough. Mm -mm. I have to say, given the choice, I usually choose the chicken rather than the fish. Um, Hugh, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, see, I suppose I'm, I'm vegetarian, so I don't really pick either. I mm. sort of suppose... So I guess the argument that they're saying is that it's 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 our water, but the, mm -hmm. the fish are sort of up for up for debate. So it's sort of like owning owning a, a house and there being furniture in it, but you not being able to use any of it, which I think is a really fun challenge. And I thought it's you know just sort of sharing the furniture, much like a much like a commune or. Or, um, or indeed, um, um, gentle communist Russia. So, it's in a way, it's protecting our waters as if they were furniture, as if you were protecting your furniture from a fat person, essentially, as we were talking about before. Well, we were talking about before, though, and that was when it was opposite. So, mm -hmm. we're not protecting mm -hmm. it from them now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm allowed to say that I don't like fat people now, or is it still switched? You, you can, but you probably shouldn't. We, we, we were on the devil's advocate round, but now we're, we're, we're double doubles out devil's advocate because we've gone through the devil's advocate round and then went now through to the other side of the devil's advocate round. So we're double, double devil's advocate. So this is sort of double, double negative. It's all fine. Oh, great. No. Um, we have had some more viewer comments in, if I can read them out to you. Sure. Um, Hugh, um, Boneless Bucket for Life has just tweeted in. Did I just hear real Hugh Lone calling overweight people thieves and murderers? Hashtag no. career suicide. Did well, you just end your career, Hugh? No, 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 no. What I did was was uh, play by the rules of the of the game that we are so so. so no, I didn't. Uh, I don't think that overweight people are thieves and murderers. You know, I think some, but also you know, I, I'm sure there have been some thieves and murderers who are overweight, but not, not because of, of their weight, but were they, were they thieves, thieves or indeed murderers? It sounds like you're still very undecided on the issue. Um, well, we've actually had um, Sharon tweets right in, rubbish, I'm 18 stone and I've never crushed a grandparent or been on a crane. Um, what would you say to someone who, it sounds like Sharon has put that to the test and she's managed to live her life as a fat person without crushing any grandparents? Yeah, what, um, what I would say is that how she managed to bag at Sharon uh, with no, you know, just as that as a as a Twitter name. That's she, impressive. She was, I think she's well entrepreneurial. Done, Sharon. She must have been right, you know, right off the bat when Twitter started, you know, to get at Sharon. Maybe um, please get back um, a bit of pace. Yeah. So, well, production, can we please book at Sharon so we can talk we to her about how she got that Twitter name? How she got that Twitter yeah. name? Jeez. Um, and it. So she says she's eighteen stone. 
she sounds beautiful. Everyone does, you know. Uh, and she's never crushed a grandparent or been on a crane. Hugh, do you have an upcoming film with Richard Curtis called yes. British Love? Uh, it's um, called British Love uh, underscore, but we don't call it love uh, in public. Yeah. Oh, it sounds great. And well, I'm so excited to start filming. Yes, thank you. I'm sure you'd be perfect in it. Although I have just had some breaking news come through saying that Richard Curtis has confirmed that he's recasting the lead for the film because of Hugh Lone's controversial appearance um, well, denigrating fat people. Um, hmm. uh, now, I'm just going to... Mean, is, is, is your dislike for fat people basically going to harm your career, is what I'm asking. See, you, you, you sort, of, sort of playing game with me a little bit there, uh, because we're just, we're just doing Offset, and I'd like to, you know, I'm going to actually, I'm just going to record a quick video um, as well, just to say that that was during a round in which we were playing Opposites. So I don't know if you made that clear though. But no, but, but you made it clear because it was the it was the devil's advocate round, isn't it? I, I don't know how um, clear it was. Jim, did you find it clear? I didn't think it was clear. I know he had a bit of a twitch going on. Mm. I, I really believed him, and actually, for the first time, he was talking some sense. So you, you, well, sort of, you sort of came alive on screen when you were talking about how much you hated fat people crushing grandparents. Well, I'm so sort of, I was, you know, I was but, thinking the show is really huh. going now. It got going now. Right. Well, I, you know, as I am, you know, an actor, so I sort of mm. uh, come come alive whilst whilst lying uh, professionally. Uh, but I'd like to re make it, you know, really, really crystal clear. Perhaps, you know, clearer than than uh, what the rules were on the devil's devil's advocate stage. Uh, but I'd like to make it crystal clear that I think fat people, you know, or you know, um, curvy people, are just groovy and what and cool so you're doing a u-turn and what you would criticize no um, no no not really a u-turn more of a more of a more of an indication uh, to what i really feel rather than what we're doing during the during the game that uh, clarissa so so helpfully set up i'm confused it's... now i don't know if we're mates or or, or if we're going to do the car park i think we can one. no we can absolutely do the um we can do the 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 the, the car park i don't want to rule that out at all um, but what I would say is that we, we probably disagree on quite a lot of things. It sounds like there's still a lot of confusion around this issue. It might run and run. Um, we've actually, we've had another tweet in from um, Sharon too. So she almost got so in quick. with the Sharon, but not quite. And she says, she's picked up on the fact that you're sitting next to Jim Davison and that he's, um, she says he's a despicable human being, one of the worst people with some of the worst opinions in the country and you've just been sitting there and you haven't really challenged him on anything I'm incredibly disappointed in Hugh Lone for not calling him out and really taking him to task over everything he's done over the last 30 years um, what do you say to that Hugh I mean are you are you prepared to really take Jim to the task and call him a despicable yeah. human being or? So what, so, 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 so really. Sharon too wants me to go, you're a despicable human being. It sounds like Sharon too really wants you to do that. Yeah. Right, well, I sort of, I sort of, I sort of just did. Uh, well, when it, I, we're saying, op are we still saying opposites or not? We, we sort of, we, we double, double doubles advocates. So yeah. we were doing like a non, we, for most of the show, there wasn't any doubles advocate thing. And then we did a round that was devil's advocate. Devil's and advocate. then we got through the round, through past the, round, the devil's past advocate, the devil's through advocate, to the other side of devil's advocate, side, where we were double doubles advocate. advocate, 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 advocate so that's yeah. essentially nothing. Essentially so, nothing, yeah. yeah. So we're all, we're all yeah. mates. Yeah. Well, we're not, I, um, we agree. Um, are we mates? Hmm. Um, do you have anything you'd like to say to Sharon to Jim about the fact that she says you're the most despicable human being ever or are you well, happy to is she just move straight oh, onto oh, the car park club as well or do you know what I mean could, I just want to know if either of these Sharons actually did have a decent you know photo with their tweets because sometimes the big ones actually can be quite bubbly and quite fun and you know in my time yeah that there has been some good occasions with the bigger girls so no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna be a snowflake and get annoyed by these these people writing in. They can say what well, you know. What I mean, I'm gonna take the mickey out of everyone so they can have a go at me. You know, the big fat ugly slobs. Unless one of them isn't that ugly, in which case, you know, I'd still be open to it because I'm not on TV as much as I used to be. So, is there a 
picture of the big fatties? Any of them bubbly? We'd have to do more research. Maybe. We'd have to yeah. look into it. Um, but on that note, um, it seems like we've pretty much unpicked all those like, latest Brexit issues. Hugh Lone's career is in tatters and the production company are just wheeling all of the gladiator props into the car, car park ready for the final physical showdown between the two guests. So at this point, I'd just like to thank you both and thank the viewers for tuning in. I certainly feel better about going into a pandemic and a climate crisis now that we've done this show. So, so glad I came on, yeah. Thank you, yeah, good no, night. Thanks. thanks for having us. Good night and good luck in the, in the fight, both of you.